Hey everybody and welcome back to a brand new video in Maya. Now, before we get started, I want to say thank you to my new sponsor, VRBN Studios in Switzerland, because without these guys, I wouldn't be able to do any of this, right? And of course, a word of thanks to my very loyal patrons. Now, some of these people have been supporting me for many, many years. As a patron, you get early access to videos, you get perks and whatnot, and uh, most of all, you're supporting me, right? So thank you so much to my patrons. That said, we're gonna start with today's video, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an LED illuminated power button. Here we go. Okay guys, well here we go. Well, funny enough, I received two identical requests in one week, whether I could create an LED power button. So here's an example. Uh, you all know what this thing looks like, so we don't really need that reference, but that's what we're gonna make, right? We're gonna do the modeling and we're gonna create that glow effect. So let's uh, go in here, delete it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a uh, polygon plane. Now we need a certain subdivision level for this. So we're gonna jump to the top view like this. I'm going to hit R to scale it up so we can all see what's going on. Yeah. And then I'm going to hit Control A to open up the attribute editor and we're going to check in our polyplane what the subdivision count is. Now mine's set to 10 by 10. Uh, you can make it higher or lower but what's important for me is to have a cross in the middle and we do. So let's close this out. And what we're going to do first is we're going to select all the faces with the exception of that outer row. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna right click at a face, I'm gonna drag select all of them, and then I'm gonna hold on shift, and I'm gonna drag select this, and drag select this, drag select this, and drag select this. So here's our initial selection. Now we need to make the outer circle first. So we're gonna hold on shift, we're gonna right click, and we're gonna to go to circularize component, like that, okay? Now you can go and tweak all these outer vertices if you like, but I um, tried this and it works just fine. So now that we have this selection right here, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna hit Control E to extrude, and we're gonna take an offset and bring it in. And that's basically to create that outer circle first. Now I have an offset of 0.3, I think that looks fine, yeah. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hit Control E again and then we're gonna hit R, and we're gonna bring in the smaller circle, which would be, I would say, somewhere in this range. Okay, looking all right. Now, what we can do next is we have to create this line in the middle, the vertical line, that has to extend outside of that small circle. So we need to go in here and insert an edge loop in the middle of this face row. Now I got a shortcut for that. Uh, if you don't, you have to go up to Edit Mesh Injured Edge Loop. I'm just gonna hit Control I to do that. And I did a video on how to create shortcuts and I'll uh, put the link up here so you know how to do that. So we're gonna go in here and I'm gonna set it to equal and then I'm gonna add an edge loop right there. I could have done multiple in one, but this works too. So we got that. And then we're basically ready to bevel. So I'm gonna right click, go to Edge. Let's start our small circle, I would say about here. And let me hit four so you can see it better. Then we're gonna hold on shift and I'm just gonna work my way around here like this. And then this one as well. And then we want this inner circle. Let's do this, 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 and this. Just trying to see how far we wanna go here. Maybe like that, I think that looks better. All right, so we have all that, and what we're gonna do next is we're gonna bevel this, all right? Now, um, I need an offset for that, and again, edit mesh bevel if you don't have that shortcut. And let's go to 0 0.7 probably. I think that'd be pretty close. Okay, so now that we have this, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna jump into our perspective view and let's see if everything is looking okay. Now, the best way to find out if everything is looking okay is to right click and go to face, click and shift, double click, 
and then we're gonna do the same here and we're gonna do the same here and as far as I can tell everything looks fine with the exception of that little triangle up there this guy right so what we're gonna do there is we're gonna select these two like that and that's fine I mean a triangle is not an end gun so we're good right okay so now that we have all of this selected what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go into perspective view and we're gonna hit control E to extrude let's hit W I'll pull it down like so and then you kind of need to decide how far you want to go down you can go crazy like this you can have it very shallow I'm gonna do maybe something like so right and then you can uh, decide whether you want to bring it in a little bit or not but the thing is I'm gonna smooth this and I'll show you what I mean so if I hit three you'll get this nice smooth lines right now if this is what you don't want if you want to have very harsh lines and want to go back and add some edge loops or bevel these edges but I want it to be smooth right so I'm gonna leave it like that so from this um, power button perspective the modeling bit is pretty much done now what I need to do though is I need to create a marker for my glow material later on so what I'm going to do is I'm first going to give a black material to the whole thing. So right click, assign new material, an Arnold shader, standard surface shader. And then we're just going to take that base color and we're going to push it all the way to the black, right? Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to select our circle. So right click at a face. And let me just hit four so we can see it better. So we got that. We got that. And here I need to be careful because I don't want those end triangles. And we got this one and we got this, no, not that one, but we do have that right there. Now let me just check that before we move forward. I wanna make sure that it's all looking okay. And it is, all right, cool. Okay, so now that we have that, right? Uh, what we need to do is assign a different material. So we're gonna right click, assign a new material. We'll do another Arnold shader. And it doesn't really matter what, as long as it's a standard surface shader right now. And the color, it's not that important either. We're gonna change that anyway, but let's do green for now, right? Okay, so let's say we got this guy complete. Now, what I need to do first is I need to um, increase that subdivision level, so three to preview smooth which will give me that all right which is kind of cool and then what we're going to do instead of preview smooth i'm going to want to go back and we're going to go to mesh and smooth to actually smooth all right so that's all smooth up now you can see that my black material is quite glossy uh, i don't want that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, let me see if i need to s tweak any uh any vertices here and i do let me quickly do that so when I smooth this out, what it did is it took these vertices. So this one right here, that one right here, and that shows in my final model and I don't want that, right? So these four. So I'm gonna hit R and I'm gonna kind of bring them in until they're inside the flow of the rest, right? Okay, so let's get rid of that reflection. We're gonna hit Control A. We're gonna go and find our black material. Let's go up here and delete the history for a second here. Delete by type history. So now we have our green and our black. And then on the black here, the uh, specular. Uh, let's see. We'll just kind of have a look here. Uh, there you go. Yeah. So uh, specularity. Push that way down. So we got rid of that. Okay. Now, uh, the green, we need to address that. Now, we don't want any color at all in the base. We don't want any specularity at all. So we're gonna bring it all the way down. The only thing that I'm interested in is emission, right? So here's where we're gonna select our green. And we're gonna go in here and we're gonna bump that value way up. Now, if I push it all the way over here, it's like one. I'm thinking more in the range of 15. And I'll show you in a minute, right? Okay, so what do we need to do next is we need to set this up for render. So we're gonna E to rotate like this at an angle, hit W, pull it up so it's above a grid. 
and we probably want to see a little reflection in the front there right so let's just rotate that a little bit more maybe like so w to pull that up then we're going to create could not quite then we're going to create a backdrop and so we're going to take a polygon plane control a to open up the admin editor let's go in here one by one it should be fine then we're going to hit r and we're going to scale that out so that's the one we want hit r scale that out like this we're going to right click go to edge at the end there I'm going to hit Control E to extrude, W to pull up, so we get a nice backdrop, and then I want to bevel this. Okay, so let's go in and create some segments, make it nice and smooth, and we don't want any color on the backdrop because we want to see this guy, right? So I'm going to uh, right-click, assign existing material, and that would be our first material. No. Um, Oh, I'm not even in object mode. Okay, let me try that again. Existing material, I think it was this one. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, so now we have that. The question is, do we need additional lights to illuminate the scene? So I'm gonna find a good angle to look. We might want to make the backdrop a bit wider. So I'm gonna hit R to scale, push it way out like that. We're gonna kind of position it like this, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to Arnold, open Arnold Render View. Then I'm gonna go up to Render and run IPR Render. And I get this, right? But that's all I get. So the question is, um, is that enough? Well, I don't, I see it's glowing, but I want it to glow more, if you will. And I wanna see kind of a reflection going on on the, on the floor there. Now, I did set that um, reflective value basically to zero, so it's very hard to achieve that. So let me just move this out of the way for a sec. And I'm gonna go into my material. Um, let me see here. I'm trying to get everything into one space so we can all see what's going on here. And I'm working with multiple monitors, so that can be tricky sometimes. Uh, let me have a look here. So this is uh, the black here. Let's do some specularity. There you go, all right. All right. So if we look at this guy right here, we see that specular glow. Yeah, let me just not dock that. Okay, there you go. Now, uh, what we can do is we can kind of move it upwards a little bit so we can see that entire uh, glow uh, happening. And what we'll do is just simply move it down like this. And we should be fine and maybe move in a little bit. And I'll show you guys in the render in a sec. There you go. Now I'm liking that, right? So what's left is to set up a render. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and close this out. We're going to close the outliner. We're going to go to our render settings. And let's start all the way on the left on the comment tab. Now, image format, I want a JPEG. Uh, quality 100, I think that's great. Uh, let's see, I want to render my uh, perspective view, right? I don't have any camera set up. By presets, I want to render 1080. There we go. And then let's see, other than that, I think it's okay. We're gonna go to render uh, on render. We're gonna go all the way down to textures. Um, I don't want to auto convert to TX, so we're gonna turn that off. And then for my values here, I want to set my camera uh, sample right here to eight. Everything else, uh, let's see. I typically will leave it on two, but let's have a look here. Um, I'll set the specular to three. Maybe four, four, right. Um, other than that, I'm going to leave that alone. I don't have any subsurface scattering. I got hard materials here, so I think that's okay. So leave all of that alone. Then we're going to go to the system. I want to use my GPU for rendering. I'm going to select my GPU right here. And then, yeah, uh, let's see. I have a um, an NVIDIA card, so I can go into denoise and uh, select this guy, turn that guy on, right? And actually I want this one, not that one. 
Alrighty, uh, cool. So we're gonna minimize this and let's do a render. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I turned that off. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna bring in the render view here and let's go in. Run IPR. Turn that off. And go to Arnold and render. Okay, really well, I tweaked it a bit. I did a re-render just to position it exactly the way I wanted. And I did want some uh, noise in that reflection so we can see that it's actually a reflection um, because otherwise it would be more like a mirror and I didn't want that. But basically that's the end result. So uh, as you can see, it's not that difficult. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions, as always, let me know. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that already. And uh, yeah, uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video, right? See you guys next time. Bye.